so you want to become a software developer. First of all, that's a fantastic choice. Becoming a developer in 2024 and working in the tech industry is one of the best things that you can do right now. Second of all, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll lay everything you should know on the table. So after watching this, you'll be able to jump straight into learning and getting ready for that juicy job offer. I'll be keeping things 100% real with you. And if it's the first time watching me, my name is Rarish, I've got a computer science degree and around 5 years of professional experience. So naturally, I picked up a couple of great tips for somebody just starting out. First, let me tell you how this video will be structured. We'll start by going over an overview of the tech scene in 2023. Then we'll go over the importance of understanding code and what are the most in-demand programming languages relevant to different career paths. Because you shouldn't really focus on JavaScript if you want to develop games. After that, I'll tell you what I would learn right now if I were to start over from zero. Following up, I'll provide recommendations for online courses, tutorials and platforms for learning to code. Because where you learn from makes a really big difference. Finally, we'll dive into some interview best practices and also some tips on how to stand out and land those interviews in the first place. So you really want to stick to the end. So let's jump right in and let's quickly recap 2023. Despite challenges, the tech industry showcased resilience, maintaining an impressively low unemployment rate for tech workers at just 2%. Acknowledging recent layoffs, the CEO of the American Staffing Association reassures that tech remains highly in demand. While big tech like Amazon, Google, Facebook struggled and downsized, opportunities are thriving in smaller enterprises, non-profit and government roles. Looking ahead to 2024, the tech industry holds promise. Despite a brief dip, there's ongoing demand. And experts anticipate stability, with the market maintaining levels similar to the last quarter of 2023. And let's be real now, you can make an API call to basically everything. From your toaster to the oven, the future will only get more infused with tech. So a lot of companies will be in big need of developers. Trust me, there is no better time than now to become a developer. Now, let's delve into the importance of understanding code which is something way more important than the choice of programming language and is fundamental to success in the tech landscape. Understanding code is like having access to a troubleshooting manual. Your comprehension of how code runs allows efficient identification and resolution of problems, ensuring a seamless user experience. Also, you're better equipped to make informed decisions. Whether it's choosing the right data structure, implementing an algorithm, or deciding on an architectural pattern, your understanding of how code operates guides you in making choices that lead to more elegant, efficient, and scalable code. A deep understanding of code enables performance optimization. Identifying bottlenecks and streamlining processes ensures smooth running applications, crucial as technology evolves. It also facilitates clear communication between colleagues, allowing for streamlined collaboration and the ability to integrate different components seamlessly. This collaborative mindset is vital because you will not be working by yourself. So why did I tell you all of this? Because you need to understand that in order to become a successful developer, you really need to put in the work and really understand what you're writing. Just copy pasting code from the internet and hacking it together will work for a very limited time, trust me. Now let's navigate the most in-demand programming languages relevant to different career paths. Now let's start with Python. It's got a really versatile and easy to read syntax, making it pretty popular for beginners. It's often used in machine learning, automation, and a little bit in web development. So it's ideal for data scientists and machine learning engineers. Next is JavaScript, which is essential for front-end web development. It enables dynamic and interactive user interfaces, and it's often used in conjunction with popular frameworks like Angular or React. So if you want to take the web route, learning JavaScript will be a must. Next is good old Java. It's the core language for Android app development. It's also widely used in enterprise applications like the ones in banks or healthcare. It's been here for a long time and it will stay here for a long time. So it's a great choice. Next one is not really a programming language, but it's really important. And I'm talking about SQL or SQL. It's fundamental for database management and data analysis, making it crucial for roles in database administration. Let me tell you a secret. Learning SQL is pretty much a must because no matter the language, you're gonna work with data. So. Tough luck. Next language is C Sharp, and it's the primary language used for developing apps in the Microsoft ecosystem. It's also used heavily in game development using the Unity game engine. With it, you can create basically everything, from web apps to desktop apps and games, which is why it's also my favorite. Next up is Swift, which is exclusive for Apple platforms, especially iOS app development. It's known for its performance and ease of use. So if you want to develop apps for the iOS, you have to learn Swift. Last one that I'll cover is Go or Golang. 
it was created by Google and it's known for its efficiency and scalability. It's gaining a lot of popularity in backend development and cloud-based solutions. So if you want to focus on backend development and maybe even get a job at Google, you have to learn Go. Right, so what would I learn? If I were starting from scratch, I'd kick things off by mastering the basics of front-end development. That means diving into the world of JavaScript, HTML and CSS, with a handy framework like Angular to make creating a basic UI a breeze. Once the front-end foundations are solid, my focus would then shift backstage to the backend. C Sharp would be my go-to language. So, after getting my hands dirty with backend and tossing in some SQL for good measure, it's time to explore the clouds. And since C Sharp and Microsoft are like peanut butter and jelly, going with Azure is the no-brainer. It's all about effortlessly integrating what I've cooked up in the backend with the wonders of cloud computing. So, recognizing the immediate wins of front-end progress, this plan is a mix of front-end finesse, backend expertise and a sprinkle of the latest cloud technology. And remember when I said in the beginning that where you learn from makes a big difference? Well, now I'm gonna show you exactly where to go in order to learn the technologies I mentioned before. Also, I'll put links in the description down below. So for everything frontend, so JavaScript, HTML and CSS, I would just focus on the MDN web docs, that's the Mozilla Developer Network. It's really comprehensive, you've got everything that you possibly need. For Angular, nothing fancy, the official documentation once again. It's really well made, you've got examples, you don't need anything else. Okay, moving on to backend. For C Sharp, I recommend the official Microsoft documentation once again. And if you're a visual learner, I also found a really nice video series for beginners made by two employees of Microsoft. For SQL, I think the best one is the W3 Schools SQL tutorial. Moving on to cloud, I recommend reading the official Azure documentation. I also found a nice GitHub repo with a lot of ready to deploy examples for common scenarios. And if you really want to step up your game, you can explore the Microsoft certifications for Azure. Keep in mind, you have to pay a fee in order to take the test. So that's basically everything you need. But remember, hands-on projects and building real applications are key to solidifying your skills. So don't just follow the tutorial. Actually implement what you learn in a personal project and make it as professional as you can. By doing this, you gain a deep understanding of code and at the end, you also have a nice project for your portfolio. See, all the crap that I was talking in the beginning now really makes sense. And if you publish that app, now you'll really stand out and impress in an interview. And speaking of interviews, there are a couple of things you can do before you apply that will exponentially grow your chances of landing the job. First of all, please do your research. Don't just apply to a thousand random companies and hoping that one will bite. Instead, understand the company culture and products. Tailor your CV to align with what the company values. Look up employees on LinkedIn. See what tech they're working with. Maybe dip your toes into those technologies and languages. Know someone who works there? Ask for a referral. That'll put you on top of the stack of the applicants. But don't stop there. Ask a lot of questions. How do they work? What tools do they use? Familiarize yourself with those tools. Do anything that you can in order to gain an advantage over the other applicants. Keep in mind that recruiters actually look for those kinds of things. They look for applicants that actually invested some time in order to apply. And trust me, when you invest time, it shows. Another important thing is to practice coding challenges. There's no way around it, especially when you're just starting out. Platforms like LeetCode, HackerRank or CodeSignal offer a variety of coding challenges. You have to practice regularly in order to enhance your problem solving skills. Okay, it's the day of the interview, and you're sweating bullets. I get it, but try to stay calm and take your time. Before jumping into coding, make sure you fully understand the problem. Ask clarifying questions and discuss your approach before writing code. It helps the interviewer understand your approach and thought flow. Once you have a working solution, try to optimize it. Discuss trade-offs and complexities with the interviewer. And before you declare your solution final, make sure to run it through some test cases. This demonstrates thoroughness. And if you get stuck, don't panic. Communicate your thought process and discuss possible solutions with the interviewer. They often value problem-solving approaches over a perfect solution. Also, be prepared for follow-up questions that might dive deeper into your solution or explore alternative approaches. Last thing, don't get sad if you don't get it the first time. I sure didn't, and very few do. After the interview, write down what you didn't know and focus on understanding those things. Always learn from any scenario, whether it's positive or negative. And sooner or later, you'll get the job, trust me. And then you'll have a bigger problem, what to do with all that money. That's it for this video. Subscribe if you liked it and have a good one. Rajesh out.